this now comes down to your favorite work that is basically working with the athletes right because yeah. now you have the subject matter in front of you please share uh prof uh, on how, what are the challenges that you see in uh, athletes because athletes are people who want to excel themselves beat the opponent and all that stuff what are the techniques that you use in order for you to bring excellence from them so please share that because it's it's in, i think anybody can uh, can learn from it and start using certain things that you can and, and it also affects the mental health right yeah uh, bro please share thanks thanks <clears throat> Uh, basically, athletes, you know, when you are an athlete, uh, when you uh, train, uh, you want to be better. So that when you compete, uh, you will outperform your opponents, uh, which is yeah. winning. So yeah. basically, train uh, to win. Uh, in uh, my uh, seminars and workshops, uh, usually uh, we focus on a goal setting, mm -hmm. you know for athletes uh, to set their goals, uh, to achieve uh, better performance uh, than they were. And uh, one of the things that uh, I have seen is that when it comes to goal settings, we tend to see the end of the journey. Mm. So we set goals, the goals is to win, uh, which is, in my opinion, is not helping much because, uh, you know, before you can win, there, there are a lot of processes, you know, you have to, uh, be better than your opponent uh, in many uh, aspects, uh, strategies, uh, physical readiness, mental readiness, and other things. So if you have not reached these uh, components, you probably will not beat your opponent. If you do, then probably it is by chance that you do win. But uh, if you were to repeat, uh, then it's probably a problematic. So uh, one uh, take-home message that I like to sell is to focus on the small things, for example, mm -hmm. getting physically ready, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, to be physically ready, you have to know your current state. And, uh, you know, relative to other uh, athletes, uh, you know, for example, if they have certain level of fitness, uh, you have to reach that level. And then in terms of uh, mental uh, readiness, you know, if you are lacking on this aspect, then you have to uh, address those and in terms of strategy and other techniques and other things. So for the goal settings, uh, the tendency to see the end of the journey, I think will not help. Instead, uh, I would suggest the athletes to focus on uh, the processes or the components associated with uh, performing well. Uh, that's for uh, how they can motivate themselves to achieve Mm -hmm. betterment in their performance. Uh, when athletes enter competitions, uh, anxiety is a common uh, experience, you know, being anxious. And yeah. uh, it's a common experience at all levels of uh, competitions, you know, be it yeah. high levels or uh, low levels. And um, a lot of things can create this experience, you know. But uh, I think the most, uh, the key contributor is uh, you know, being afraid to lose, then will, uh, you know, if you are not afraid to lose, then you will not feel anxious. For example, if you are playing in a friendly games as opposed to an actual uh, competitions, there is no uh, anxiety in a friendly games. You know, you are excited, you do a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, you show off with a lot of techniques and skills, some things that you do not do in an actual competition. Because if you do that, you uh, fear that you know if you make a mistake then it costs a point and uh, probably your team will lose so for um, motivations getting athletes prepared i would say that uh, goal setting is uh, the key to uh, you know get them prepared by focusing on the process uh, whereas for the uh, anxiety, a lot of strategies, one of it is uh, progressive muscle relaxation. Mm. It's very um, effective techniques actually. Uh, we have, um, in, from our research, we, uh, we have seen that uh, uh, it needs to be practiced continuously. Um, of course, the longer the better. But uh, a session as short as five minutes uh, will also uh, provide effectiveness. 
So for the benefits of the audience, uh, the uh, progressive muscle relaxation is systematically uh, tensing mm -hmm. and relaxing muscles. So we start from the uh, forehead uh, down to toes. Uh, we can, uh, you know, for example, forehead. Can, can we do that? Yeah, can we can, can uh, you know, like we can tense our forehead muscles mm -hmm. by, uh, uh, you know, tensing these parts probably for five, four, three, two, one seconds, and then relaxing it for uh, five seconds, five, uh, four, three, two, one. And then uh, we can repeat that, or we can move to the jaw muscles. You know, uh, we can clench our teeth uh, to uh, tense the jaw muscle. So for five seconds, five, one, yes, and then relaxing it for seven, uh, five to seven seconds. And then we can, uh, you know, either repeat that or going down to so our shoulder. So for shoulder, we can do like this, uh, stretching for five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, and relaxing it for five seconds, five to seven seconds, five, four, three, two, one. You know, while we do this, uh, it also comes with uh, breathing as well. Uh, uh, in, inhale and exhale as we uh, tense our muscles. So we can uh, move down to our arms. We can do uh, both at the same time, so one, one by one. So uh, really, uh, you know, clench your fist for five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, and release it for five seconds, five, four, three, two, one. And then uh, move down to our stomach. Uh, we can, uh, you know, uh, push it, uh, uh, tense it for five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, and release it. Uh, and uh, move down to the thighs and uh, to the legs. Right, five seconds, uh, re uh, relaxing for five seconds, and uh, down to the uh, to the foot. Right, so oh, usually wow. we can do this. Uh, you know, I repeat uh, uh, foreheads uh, maybe uh, twice. So we can spend about five minutes. And uh, in fact, if you notice that uh, uh, some people, when uh, they go into interviews. Uh, you know, when they are in, uh, you know, anxiety experience or anxious, they tend to chew gums. Uh, mm. If you look at it, it's actually tensing and relaxing uh, mm. emotions, you know, tense, relax, tense, relax, tense, relax. And uh, uh, from uh, a report from the people who actually like to chew gum, they say that when they chew gums, it actually makes them feel a bit relaxed. And, uh, you know, we can associate this to this. Uh, and in fact, uh, when we, for example, uh, you know, when we um, uh, are stretching, for example, uh, watching or being in front of the PC for a long time and then stretch, stretch a little mm -hmm. bit, stretch a little bit. And after stretching, we feel relaxed. Yeah. And uh, we do that. Uh, because of a natural body uh, response yeah, to yeah. feeling of tense or feeling tense here, uh, you know, we do like that. It's a uh, natural, but for progressive muscle relaxation, we put that um, in systematically, you know, mm. uh, things that we actually do to uh, relax uh, the body or to relax the muscle systematically. So um, uh, before competitions, um, I actually, I usually advise uh, athletes to actually engage in a very short, uh, you know, uh, progressive muscle relaxation. So this is uh, one technique that I have studied for quite some time. And uh, wow. from the research and from the experience I share with athletes, it's actually very effective to regulate uh, their stress and emotion. But wow. it will be more effective, it is combined with how they think uh, about the situation that they're going to yeah. face, competitions, yeah. opponents, uh, it will help uh, create uh, greater effects uh, for themselves wow. in terms of wow. regulating uh, 
this uh, stressful or anxious experience. Wow. Prof, I'm very excited with that. I'm definitely going to do that. I have a question on this. Um, so, is it the reason why we're doing this, which is all our natural occurrence, like what you said, please, you know? Yeah, it's the body is actually talking to us, but we're not listening, right? Yeah. So I want to ask you, by doing this muscle relaxation technique, are we actually moving from, from sympathetic to parasympathetic? Are we actually getting our signals that is firing in stress where it's from reptilian and limbic, which is amygdala part, which is stress? And mm -hmm. while we're doing relaxation, are we pushing the signal now towards our neocortex where we're able to rationally think rationally look at things in a solution oriented rather than uh, being threatened is that the situation bro uh, we may feel tense uh, subconsciously the muscle uh, you know resulting from the sex experience so the exercise that we do is to send the signal to the muscle to relax um, yeah. so that uh, you know uh, instead of being in a tense uh, conditions we send uh, through that, we send the signal to the muscle to relax. Okay. So from uh, uh, something that uh, happening uh, without our uh, conscious awareness uh, to something is consciously, uh, we, we do that consciously. So yeah, wow. uh, to the questions, yeah, it is. Wow, that's awesome. So this is actually part of being human, Prof. I'm so happy because you're making the athlete to be consciously responsive rather mm -hmm. than compulsively reacting mm -hmm. to the situation where they can make more mistakes. Yeah. Um, so the two names came to me while you were talking to me. One is Michael Phelps. Another yeah, one is yeah. Ben Johnson. So I remember one of the interview Michael Phelps did, I can't remember when and which uh, news uh, or, uh, station, he said uh, he trains seven days a week. Mm. Uh, he doesn't take break. Uh, and the rest of the world class uh, swimmers swim six days and one day rest. So uh, this is what uh, he was going through. He was missing parties and all that stuff. So when he was asked this question, the reason why he's doing this is basically he said in a year, he has 52 days, he has worked even harder where he's 52 days stronger than other swimmers. Other swimmers. The reason why I'm saying that is basically, uh, you said about chunking down the goal into small pieces yes, and yes. mastering them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I'm a fan of that. Uh, that's what I do with my clients. I'll get them excited with their goals, very excited. And then I'll tell them, scrap it, put it when, when you're feeling down, look at it, fine. But let's work the process that we need to yeah. work on from the goal in the future to right now, chunk yes. it down and just Very focus true. on this. Very true. Wow, I love this. Very so true. another name that came to me is Ben Johnson. Yeah, in sprinter. One of the, I, sprinter. Remember in one of the, I think Montreal or what, he was running. Why when he, he broke running, the world record? Uh, no, he lost to uh, Carl Lewis. Remember, he looked, yes. he looked on the right to see where is Carl Lewis and Carl Lewis overtook him. Yes, yes. That is basically maybe performance orientation. He's looking yeah. at best my opponent and the opponent beat him. This is so amazing. So my my